Southern New England is primarily power outages, as we were, as we were saying, and toppled trees. We're fortunate the storm did not do any more serious damage, but cleaning up after the storm and waiting for the electricity to come back on can be very frustrating and expensive. Eyewitness News reporter Marilyn Scher joins us now with more live in Portsmouth with the East Bay Mobile Newsroom. This beautiful day after the storm is such a sharp contrast to this destruction that Irene deposited on so many communities throughout the state. There are dramatic pictures of fallen trees and downed wires on many streets throughout Warwick, which is just a fraction of the total damage from Irene across the ocean state. Well, I think we're very lucky. It could have been a lot worse. Lucky is an accurate way to describe Irene's impact. On Aspen Way, trees toppled on two different houses, crushing everything in their path and causing severe damage to the inside of one home. We were sleeping. I woke up to the whistling. Like it sounded like someone was screaming in the window. It sounded like a train, like a train wreck. Along the streets with power out, intersection traffic lights were dark, so police directed drivers. Those businesses with power that were open saw an influx of customers. As you can tell by the line, you should have seen it last night here. The line was actually out on the road, on the main road. Unbelievable. Looked like the end of the world. It was crazy. National Grid says they repaired a down transmission line near the Montauk Country Club that cut off power to customers. So power is back at Newport Hospital and slowly returning to the rest of Aquidneck Island. Most of the island seems to have it now. Um, you know, there are still some places that don't look like they do, but, you know, I'm not sure if it's that their power's off or they were just closed for business today. Now, we spoke with that woman outside the uh, Portsmouth Post Office, which told me they had power restored by 11 a.m. That woman who was from Middletown said her power came on by 1 p.m., but that she still did not have cable or Internet. Friday, Maryland. So at its peak, we're hearing that 90 percent of the island's customers were without power. Uh, how did National Grid decide where to go first? Well, I spoke with the National Grid spokesperson just a little while ago, and he said they wanted to reach those emergency public safety locations first. So Newport Hospital, they wanted to get back up, and they did get that power restored by noon. He said after that, now with that transmission line restored from Fall River through Aquidneck Island down to Jamestown, that's their next goal, to work on restoring power through Aquidneck Island right through to Jamestown. Well, that makes sense. What about the businesses there? How are they handling this? Uh, most of the businesses and the residents are, are handling it well. They have remained calm. Many people are still going out looking for supplies, though, either ice or water or something like that. Uh, uh, mostly, I think, they're calm, but they're concerned that they'll have to keep spending money to uh, find meals and things like that, which is something they don't want to do. So for how long they'll remain calm and uh, patient is unclear. All righty. Thanks a lot, Marilyn.